How fast does your Arduino code run? In this video, you are going to learn the trick that I'm using to accurately measure the speed of my Arduino code. A few weeks ago, I released this tutorial where we built an Arduino dice roller and we created this display number function, which was pretty long. And then in the second part of the tutorial, we optimized that function and made it only seven lines of code instead of the very long function that we had before. And then I got some questions. People asked me which version is faster. Is the shorter version actually faster than this version that you see here on the left? So this gave me the idea to create this tutorial where I show you how I measure the speed of Arduino code. And we are going to do this without any external hardware, just um, by adding a few lines of code. By the end of the video, you will know which of these two version actually runs faster. But before that, let's test a smaller piece of code. I've opened a new tab and what we're going to try to do now is to measure how much time this simple digital write call takes. We will ignore the loop for now so we can focus on this digital write line. And then in order to start the measurement, we will need to do a few things. First of all, we need to initialize the measurement and then we'll need to take the measurement and finally print the result. So in order to be able to print the result, we'll initialize the serial output so we can send a message to the computer with the result. And then one way we can perform this measurement is by using Arduino's micros function. So we can write long start equal to micros and basically just uh, say uh, duration equals to micros minus start. So essentially subtracting these two values. And finally, we print the result, uh, serial.println duration. And that would give us an approximate values in microseconds. Let's run this code and see the result. So we can see that the result is eight microseconds. And this is one method that I used in the past to measure the speed of my code, but it's not very accurate, as you will see in a moment. Before we continue, let's just add some more comments, code under test, uh, and end of code under test. And now let me show you a much more accurate way to do this measurement. Instead of using the micros function, we are going to use the Arduino clock cycles. Now, what is a clock cycle? The clock is an integral part of the Arduino microcontroller and it pulses 16 million times a second. It is the metronome that orchestrates all the parts of the microcontroller and make sure that everything works in sync. We are going to take advantage of this clock for the measurement and we are going to do it by using one of the timers that come with Arduino. Let's talk about the Arduino timers for a minute. We'll have a look at a blog post that I wrote about five ways to blink an LED with Arduino, and it has this section that speaks about timers. And if we check it out, we can see that Arduino has three different timers, zero, one, and two. Timers zero and two count from zero to two, five, five, and timer one goes all the way up to more than 65,000. Let's pause this. You're probably asking yourself, what do these numbers represent? And the answer is clock cycles. These timers or counters simply count clock cycles and that's how they keep track of time. And we can also decide how fast these timers count by setting some configuration bits in one of the uh, control registers. Specifically, we can set this configuration bit to count every single clock cycle. We can also count every 8, 64, 256 or 1024 clock cycles. In our case, we want to have the most precise measurements, so we will configure the timer to count every single clock cycle. In order to do this, we need to set the CS10 bit in one of the configuration registers, specifically the TCCR1B register. Let's go back into the code and do that. First of all, we can get rid of micros, we no longer need it, and we can set a bit of this register, TCCR1B, and we wanted to set the uh, CS10 bit, uh, which configures the counter to count every single clock cycle. 
And the next thing we want to do, we want to reset the counter to zero. So that would be TC and T1 equals zero. So that we start counting from zero. And that's it. These two lines are all we need in order to start counting Arduino clock cycles. All we need to do now is to run the code that we want to measure and then take the value of this counter and store it into a variable that would be unsigned int variable. Uh, let's call it cycles and it will have the value of the counter. Now um, we can print this value now, uh, the result, but there is one more thing we need to do. Let me show you what happens when the code under test is empty. We are going to comment this out for a moment. So there is no code under test. And in this situation, I would expect the code to run in zero cycles because there is no code. And when I'm running it, I can see that this prints one. And the reason for that is the time it takes to copy the value of the counter into this variable that takes one more cycle. So in order to adjust for that, we would actually need to print cycles minus one. So that would be the actual clock cycles it took this code under test run. And if we run this code again, we can see that now it prints zero, which is the correct value. There are no cycles because we didn't uh, run any code under test. And that's it. We are finally ready to measure our line of code. So let's uncomment it and run it. And we can see that it takes 38 cycles to run. But what does this number mean? How much time is 38 cycles? In order to answer that, let's go back for a moment to what we said before that the clock ticks 16 million times a second. So there are 16 million cycles per second. And this means that if we divide this number of cycles that we get by 16, we get an amount of microseconds it took the code to run. So let's write that. We basically want to take this and divide it by 16. And let's also add some labels. So that would be uh, the first number is the cycles. And then the second number is the uh, microseconds. So that would be microseconds. And now if we run the code, we should be able to see something. And you can probably see that we have a small bug here. 38 divided by 16 is not exactly two, it's rounded down. So in order to fix that, we need to convert this uh, value to float before uh, dividing it by 16. Let's try that. And now we can see the actual time it took the function to run, 2.38 microseconds. Let's just improve these prints a bit. So cycles and microseconds with a capital M. For the good measures, we are going to add another line of code at the beginning, initializing the other timer configuration register to zero, just to be sure that it's set to the initial value without any configuration bits left over from the Arduino library code or from the bootloader code. And run the code again we still get the same result, 2.38 microseconds. And if you remember at the beginning, when we used the micros function to do this measurement, we got something like eight microseconds. So this shows you how much less accurate that method was. And now we finally have this setup that lets us measure code and we can start playing around. For instance, let's see what happens if we try to put another pin number instead of LED built in. Will it still take 2.38 microseconds? Let's try pin number 11, for example. And when we run the code, we can see that this time it's slower. It takes 3.38 microseconds. And I believe that the reason for that is that 11 is a PWM pin. If you look at the Arduino board, it has this little wave next to it. And for that reason, digital write has run more code when you uh, change its value. Another fun test we can do is comparing digital write with direct port access. So instead of using digital write, we can write directly to the port registers to set this pin high. So for pin number 13, that would be uh, port B equals bit uh, five. And if you want to know more about how these port registers work, there is a good video from Talofer99, a good friend of mine that explains this. But for now, just remember that this is more or less the equivalent of digital write 13 high. Let's run it. 
Oh yeah, my bad, it should have been bit, not bits. Let's run it again. And now we can see the LED turned on and it took only 0.12, only two cycles. So if you remember the first one, the digital white 13 high took 38 cycles. And this one is obviously much faster. And you probably heard that direct register access is faster, but now you know actually how much it is faster, how much time you save by doing this instead of like uh, using digital write. Another thing that I want to show you is let's write a loop that will run for 1000 times. So that would be I goes from zero until 1000, I plus plus and does nothing, it's an empty loop. And if we run this code, we can see that it actually takes no time. And the reason for that is that the, that the compiler sees this is an empty loop, it does nothing. So it basically removes this code. This code does not run on your Arduino. And if we wanted the compiler to keep this code, there are some things that we could do. For instance, we could use the volatile keyword to tell the compiler that this variable is actually important and it should be updated with all the values from uh, zero to 1000. And if we run this again, we can see that now this code actually takes more than 1000 microseconds to run. When we uh, added the volatile keyword, it made the compiler keep this for loop and execute it. Another thing I want to show you is uh, let's have a look at this delay microseconds f uh, function that comes with Arduino and let's ask it to delay for 10 microseconds. And we can see that the delay is not very accurate. It's actually delaying for only 8.81 microseconds. And if we try other numbers, we can see that it has the same degree of inaccuracy for every number that we put in. And if we put here one, it will actually no delay at all. The compiler will figure out that this delay is basically too short and it will just remove this code altogether. However, if we slightly change the code and add a variable, let's call it uh, microsex, um, and it starts with a value zero and then in the function setup we increment it. And finally, instead of uh, calling delay microseconds with one, we will just call it with the value of microsex, which is one. But this time uh, we did a few manipulations on this value. So the compiler won't be able to know that this is actually one and it won't be able to figure out that this code should be optimized. So when we run it, we can see that now it did generate a 0.5 microseconds delay. So it's the same thing. We called delay microseconds with the same value with one in two different tests, but because of the way the compiler optimizes the code, it actually took a different amount of time. And I, I find it fascinating that the compiler goes a long way to optimize our code and does all sort of uh, tricks to make it run faster. And this method lets us look under the hood and see what actually happens when we run our code on Arduino. Um, last thing before we go back to the original test that we wanted to do to test the function from the dice roller game, let's just have a look at delay of one microsecond, a standard delay of one microsecond, and let's see how accurate it is. Um, running it, yeah, not too bad. It's, it should have been 1000 microseconds, but we have uh, four extra microseconds but overall, it works pretty well. If we go up to two, we can see that uh, it's around 2000 uh, microseconds. So it's pretty accurate, not to the uh, microsecond, but almost there. And another thing you may notice is that if we keep going up, we will soon go over the limit of the unsigned in variable, which is around 65,000 and something. And Basically, this means that uh, I think if we go with four, that would be around this limit. Yes, so it's 64. So it means that this method can be used to measure things that take up to 4000 microseconds, more or less. And there are some ways to overcome these limitations, but let's keep it simple for this video.
Okay, and now we can take this code that we created and use it in order to measure the speed of the dice roller function that we had. So let's copy this uh, whole setup from uh, the beginning and uh, go back to the dice roller tab. And let's also initialize the uh, serial part so we can print the results and create a new function and call it uh, measure display number. And this function is basically going to be the same as we had before, but it's going to measure the display number function instead of like uh, measuring delay as we did before. And we are going to also use this byte, this number argument and pass it to display number. And let's go back to our original goal of comparing this uh, longer display number with the shorter version. So uh, we'll copy the longer one and we will paste it here. So we have them in the bo both in the same file and call this display number long and the shorter one will be display number short. And now we can uh, start measuring. First of all, we will measure uh, display number log long um, we don't need a keyword byte here. So uh, running this measurement code and each time calling display number long with a different number from one to six. Um, actually, I only want this to run once, so I will add an infinite loop here just while true, so it never runs again. And let's also print uh, the value of i, the uh, number that we display, so basically i and let's run it. So um, yeah, that would be a measure display number now. Let's run it again. Yes, we can see it works and we can see that the values are pretty interesting. Um, the, this is the uh, longer version and it takes anywhere between 34 and 53 microseconds, let's copy it, uh, so we have this. So it takes um, different amount of time depending on uh, the number of that it displays. And I think the reason for that is that it runs a different number of commands for each number. And then if we change the code to uh, measure display number short instead, we can finally see what the difference would be um, before we do this, um, what would your guess be? Will display number short run uh, faster than this display number long? And if so, how faster will it run? Let's see. So it's building and now it's running and we can already see that it's a bit faster. And another interesting thing is that it runs nearly in the same amount of time for all the numbers. So here we had a huge variation between 34 microseconds and 53. And here it's always 28 point uh, something. And I think the reason is uh, for this point something is that digital write actually takes a slightly different amount of cycles depending on uh, whether you give it high or low. Um, but now you know how to measure this so you can uh, test my hypothesis and see if it's correct. Well, that's all for this video and I hope that you learned some new things about Arduino today. Usually the speed of the code doesn't matter that much, but when it does, it really comes handy to know how to measure it, like we did today. And I also find it fun to tinker with the code to try different things and see how much they affect the execution speed of the code um, and what kind of new optimizations the compiler does. Finally, I hope that this inspires you to look into your code and explore different things and, you know, just measure things and have fun like we did here. Um, and as always, you can find the code and some useful links in the video description below. So until the next time, bye bye.